This is the content on diversity and multiculturalism and social justice, and I'm going to be talking about definitions, history, and the current presence in curriculum and content about these topics. So, let's go into definitions. So the first definition is diversity, um, and it's generally understood as being unlike in quality or nature, and the main thrust is on differences. It refers to the human differences that account for the uniqueness of the individual and of group life, and diversity includes all of us as each individual is unique and one of a kind. Next, multiculturalism. Uh, there's three different approaches to the definition of multiculturalism. First of all, um, there's cultural pluralism or cultural diversity, and that's basically inclusive of all groups that are defined as cultures. In the second approach, um, the term only refers to people of color and the cultures of those people. Um, so these are people that belong to ethnic minority groups. And in the third group, um, the term refers to both the people of color and other populations at risk for discrimination and oppression. So it's also important to keep in mind that in each of these approaches, ethnic group and cultural group are used interchangeably. So next we're going to go into a history of the use of diversity and multiculturalism in social work education. So starting in the 1950s, there was a framework of a melting pot. The emphasis was on the treatment of clients' problems, and it was individualistic in nature as opposed to looking at structural sources of the problems. Next, in the 1960s, you have an awareness of cultural context, and this is basically where social work started to consider the socio-cultural context uh, around a client's life, not just the client themselves. And this is when diversity started being used for the first time in social work education as far as the curriculum and the content. Next, the 1970s. Um, this is when you have a lot of political and economic issues going on. Um, you also have the influence of the civil rights movement, voting rights, work programs for the poor, and so here the emphasis was placed on minority perspectives. Um, and so this is when the curriculum started to include information on people of color and women. And in fact, in 1971, CSWE uh, mandated that all accredited social work programs uh, must include content about women and designated ethnic and racial minorities, which included blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Asians. So that's kind of an important benchmark. Uh, next in the 1980s was cultural pluralism. Um, and so this is where you saw content on other vulnerable and oppressed groups. Um, so the emphasis was put on identity development. And so this is when the term multiculturalism started to become uh, common in the social work curriculum. Uh, and this term started to become popular because a lot of uh, educators recognized that there was a dilemma with the term diversity and basically overgeneralizing it to specific populations. Um, and so that's why multiculturalism started to be used. Next, uh, the 1990s, um, basically a respect for differences. This is when um, diversity issues really expanded to not only ethnic and racial issues, but also variables such as age, sex, um, gender, physical and mental abilities, sexual orientation, religious affiliation, and political affiliation. So at this point, CSWE mandates that content on human diversity must be included as one of the nine core areas of study in CSWE accredited schools. So this is when you see the term cultural competence coming in. Um, and so cultural competence is learning about the shared history and characteristics of various groups 
and it's an objective that educators believed they could measure. They, could, they believed they could measure the cultural competence of their students. And of course, this is through a positivist lens. So this brings us into the 2000s, when there was an ethno-cultural framework. This came from a so social construct constructionist view, um, and the emphasis was to teach social work students to become morally active practitioners. And the framework recommends that you don't use an either-or approach, but rather a reflexive dialectic stance. So now, we have intersectionality. And this is a multidimensional concept that refers to two levels. On one level, it's how the multiple identities of an individual contribute to that person's sense of self, their perspectives, and their aspirations. And on the other hand, it also refers to an individual's multiple social functions, um, where the person is both the oppressed and the oppressor at the same time. So that's kind of a brief history of diversity and multiculturalism in curriculum content. So here's, now we come to the current education policy. That's just a blurb just to let you know that it's there, it's on the website, you can check it out, but we're not going to read it now. Um, so I wanted to just kind of reflect on where diversity and multiculturalism were at as now as opposed to before. Um, and so before, it was an assumption of knowledge, the student could have knowledge or information about culturally diverse groups, and that would lead to competent practice. Um, and so that's again in a positive, positivist framework, but after the 2008 EPAS, that was more a postmodernist lens coming in that moved away from competence to, sorry, moved away from content about people to competence. And again, that's where the cultural competence term comes in. And it moves from certainty that, yeah, we can definitely know everything there is to know about diversity to uncertainty that, hey, maybe there are things out there that, that we don't always know about diverse groups. Um, and so at this point, it's not the educati education is not focused on knowledge that leads to competent practice, but instead practice behaviors that indicate the professional competencies. So that's kind of where we're at with diversity and multiculturalism. Next we are going to talk about social justice. So definitions, um, basically social work education usually uses a framework that John Rawls is credited for, um, and that's an egalitarian approach or, or framework that every citizen is regarded as equal with the same rights to goods. So this theory, the egalitarian theory, emphasizes equal access to the goods in life that everybody, every rational person thinks that you ought to have, and everyone receives an agreed upon basic minimum of goods regardless of other factors. So that's the egalitarian approach. There's another approach that's sometimes taught, but it's not as common. That's the utilitarian approach, uh, which is where one tries to distribute resources, calculating the greatest good for the greatest number. That emphasizes maximum public utility, uh, but it involves trade-offs. So decisions are made about resource allocation. Uh, they're made with an understanding that many will benefit by receiving goods, but some will not have access to resources and services. So moving into a history of social justice in curriculum, there's a lot of ambiguity out there. This is after I did literature search and tried to find what is the curriculum content on social justice and social work education. And a lot of people say that we teach it and that it's a core value, but they never really talked about how or even what it is. Um, and so, basically, that's a, that's a problem that I'm going to highlight um, coming up, but everyone definitely agrees that it's a core value of social work, um, and it's been there throughout time in social work practice. Um, 
and one author even notes that even in conservative times, social workers have still reported that they can see that there are structural problems, structural sources that um, contribute to oppression. So basically the legacy of social justice remains strong in social work as a profession. Um, but it didn't leave me with much as far as what's in the curriculum. So um, here's the education policy. Um, again, it's on the website, so you can look at it. Um, and so here I'll just highlight again that um, the terms social and economic justice have never been clearly defined. Um, and so that makes it difficult for programs to produce evidence of students' competencies. Um, and really the fact of the matter is that our profession claims this to be a value that's a cornerstone to our profession, but at the same time, we don't know what it is. So clearly that's a problem and we need to work on it. So this brings me to my understanding of how all these concepts go together. Um, I understand that they are all interrelated and not separate concepts. Um, and this is based on a belief that understanding the sources of oppression by understanding diversity will enable a student to practice toward the goal of social justice. So they're all moving parts that finally end you in the uh, end goal of social justice. So that concludes my discussion on the definitions, history, and current presence of these concepts.